he was a young lad when he came here, 22 years old, 23 years old. And he was a knight, and he was the chaplain of the Knights of Columbus. You know, among the knights, he was a man of prayer among them. Uh, they looked to him as a model. Father Coyle was always active with the Knights, supportive of the Knights. Of course, in, in some ways, that probably made him even more controversial. He defended the poor in this community. He, he defended the ethnic minorities who came to Birmingham to work in this booming steel town. Whether they were Italian or Irish or whatever they might be, and he welcomed you know, people from the Middle East. He started the first black schools and real radical identification with people in a booming community. There had been a lot of anti-Catholic incidents in Birmingham and in Alabama. And there was violence and there were threats. And Father Cole, for seven years, um, knew of these threats. A young woman by the name of Ruth Stevenson her father, Edwin Stevenson, was a Methodist minister of sorts. His ministry was performing marriages at the county courthouse. He was a member of the Ku Klux Klan. He was enraged by his daughter's fascination with the Catholic Church. And he threatened that he would kill the priest if she converted. She was engaged to be married to a Puerto Rican man named Pedro Guzman who had darker skin. Ruth and this young man named Pedro Usman had contacted St. Paul's and, and said they wanted to be married. Father Coyle was asked to perform that marriage. They came to Father Coyle and he celebrated their marriage in the church. And then about three hours later, while he was on the porch praying his breviary as he did, Stevenson walked right up onto the porch and shot him through the temple point blank. He walked back over to the courthouse and he said to everybody there, I just shot the priest. The murder of Father Coyle immediately set into motion efforts to bring Edwin Stevenson uh, to justice, but also efforts to defend him. There was enormous pressure, of course, to absolve Edwin Stevenson of any wrongdoing. And the issue was, will a court convict a man for killing a priest in cold blood in the Deep South? Every major national news media organization was represented with reporters at the trial. There was international coverage of this trial. The prosecution never had a chance. <laughs> the judge was a Klansman, and virtually every single objection he ruled against the prosecution, no matter what it was. You had a, a great number of Klansmen on the jury itself. The star witness with the chief of police for the defense uh, was a Klansman. Edwin Stevenson was acquitted by the jury. It was a terrible miscarriage of justice. And then after the trial, the Klan and anti-Catholic organizations celebrated the verdict. We know this was a minority group, but they were powerful. Most of the Protestants in the area condemned the killing. The public thought, this is what can happen when uninformed prejudice just gets out of control. Stevenson was acquitted. The former governor of Alabama, Emmett O'Neill, made a formal statement, and he said, the way that judge handled that trial was unbelievable. He said, what he has done is make an open season on Catholics. Since the killing of Father Coyle, it is kind of like a tipping point. People were so shocked by it that it really did have a calming effect here. And there was a noted decline in the anti-Catholicism from that point on. For 20 years now, we've been having the Father James E. Coyle Memorial Mass and, and reception. We've had a memorial mass to celebrate his legacy and to pray for his repose, as we also continue to move forward discerning whether we should open a cause for canonization in his regard. In one of his sermons, he said, give, give again, and then give again till it hurts, only then is it sacrifice. In fact, when he was called and told that Ruth and Pedro had showed up at St. Paul's and wanted to be married, he remarked to a fellow priest that he would probably be killed for that. 
but he knew his duty as a priest and as a minister of Christ. Well, for the Knights, of course, the, there's the knowledge that Father Coyle really inspired our council, and so there's a certain pride of knowing that, in a certain way, he still has our back. And I believe he's face to face with the Lord now, in God's mercy and grace. He's fearless, courageous, a great model for men and women. What a model for the Knights of Columbus.